of all the systems within Marvel Constant of Champions, the Mastery system has to be one of my favorites. It allows us to enhance our champions, and because every player has a different set of champions within our rosters, and every player has different champions that we personally prefer to play and gravitate towards, and because every player is at a different stage of the game taking on different challenges from one another, our masteries is something that really sets players apart from one another. Everyone should have a at least a slightly different mastery build, if not a very different mastery build. For example, you know, maybe you like to play Blade because Blade's a strong champion, and if that's the case, then Deep Wounds is the strongest mastery that you can pick up. But maybe you never got Blade, and maybe you don't play that many Bleed champions. And if that's the case, well, then you probably want to put those points elsewhere. They're probably not doing a whole lot for, for champions that, that don't cause Bleed, right? And I want more of that. I want to see I want to see more. We have these coming soon buttons here for, for different masteries, but let's face it, they've been here for a while, and I don't see us really getting these masteries anytime soon. I hope that we do get some more masteries, but you know, thinking realistically about it, there's over 150 champions in this game. How do you add masteries that aren't going to be overpowered for some champions or be kind of crappy for, for other champions. Uh, and most of the ideas that you can really put into the masteries that cover a wide range of champions, most of these ideas, they're already here. You know, masteries that affect our attack, affect our defense in different ways. Sure, you can come up with different variations of deep wounds for the other damage types like shock or incinerate, but there's not a ton that you can do to allow us to customize our champions through this mastery system that covers all of our champions. So today I'd like to introduce a concept of the individual champion specific masteries. And in order to get an idea of how this works, I want to take a look at a game that is already successfully doing this, which is Dota 2. And I promise you it won't take that long and we'll come back to uh, implementing that idea into Marvel Constant of Champions uh, along with uh, some changes uh, to really make the idea work. So let's, let's go ahead and take a look at how it plays out in Dota 2 first though. These are actual masteries from Dota 2 or talents as they're called in that game and you don't need to know anything about how that game works. As a matter of fact, I'm only showing you this to make a comparison to uh, characters within Marvel Constant of Champions. What you need to know about Dota is that it's a game that has over 100 characters in it, just like Marvel Constant of Champions. So it's a system designed for a game with a lot of different characters that you can play. The character on the left in Dota is called Phantom Assassin, who would be someone similar to, let's say, Corvus, a character that's designed to deal crazy amounts of damage, high, you know, critical damage and all that. The character on the right is called Lich in Dota, and it's more of a utility-based character. There's not really a great direct comparison in Marvel Constant of Champions terms, but let's, let's compare that character to Void. So I want you to think of uh, the character on the left as Corvus' character right on, uh, as, as Void from here on out. And I want to look at two different uh, tiers. First off, the way it works in that game, you see the numbers uh, 10, 15, 20, 25. Well, you level up to 25 in that game, and as you hit these different milestone levels, you get to select the option on the left or the option on the right. Um, the set that's highlighted right now, you can choose between gaining a little bit of health or a little bit of damage. In Marvel Constant of Champions terms, that would be 15% health or 15% attack. And there's a reason why the 15% attack is selected in this case, because if you're playing a damage dealing character like Corvus, that's probably what you're going to select, right? Who cares about the health? It's all just about how hard can you actually hit the opponent. Now, I want to take a look at the set on the right, and it's giving an option between a ton more damage, right, plus 120 damage in MCOC terms, that would be a plus 120% increase of attack, so more than doubling your character's attack, uh, or some other option, we're not going to get into the text, uh, just it's part of that character's utility, right, and you could see that that is actually what's selected in this case. Um, and the reason for that is you don't play Void for Void's 
damage, right, his physical damage at least. You play Void because he can stack up these debuffs, and he's more of that utility-focused character. But why is there such a big difference in, in the damage that you can gain uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the left versus on the right? Is it because it's a, a different tier of, of these talents? No. It's because you can't double someone's attack like Corvus. If you double his attack, and he's going from you know having 10k crits to 20k crits, that's going to break the game. You know, it's, it's just too much. Increasing his attack by 15%, is reasonable. Uh, it's it's going to be a nice bonus to have, but it's not going to totally break the game wide open. Uh, whereas the character on the right, again, Void, you're not playing Void for that attack. So uh, you know, it, let, let's actually let's actually change some of this text around and just look at the the, the set on the right. Uh, again, that plus 120 damage. Let's say that's equivalent to plus 120 percent attack. And let's say that text is instead of minus four seconds on Frost Blast, whatever that means, right? Let's say it's minus four seconds on the Intimidating Presence cooldown. That's the cooldown, uh, that's, that's how fast you're applying the debuffs with Void. So now every debuff is coming out four seconds faster. Um, so yeah, I mean, given the option to either massively increase your attack or have these debuffs roll out that much faster, you'd probably want the debuffs to roll out that much faster, right? Uh, if you, you know, if, if you doubled Void's attack, he still wouldn't hit as hard as Corvus, even without any additional damage boost. Uh, it'd be nice to have, don't get me wrong, but we already see this with Void. When Fear of the Void activates, and if you have him max sig level, you're already more than doubling your attack, and he still, again, doesn't hit as hard as Corvus. So, there's two things that I want to point out about this. Number one, having these individual uh, mastery trees, or talent trees, it allows you to be more flexible with how how you're uh, boosting the stats of the character. Um, it allows you to give a larger increase in attack to champions that don't hit as hard. Uh, and maybe you'd want to take that if, let's say, you just need an incinerate immune champion that uh, you're going up against a, a debuff immune enemy, right? So you're not going to be able to, to land your debuffs anyway. This would allow you to at least increase Void's attack um, on the level of, if you already had Fear of the Void going, that is uh, kind of a natural attack booster for Void, right? It would allow you to, to have that option um, and not be overpowered, right? If, if, you're, if you're giving both of these characters the option to have plus 120 attack, it's going to be way overpowered for one. Um, now, the other thing that this system does is it allows you to more specifically enhance your characters. In this case, we're seeing it's affecting the Intimidating Presence cooldown. That's not something that you can have uh, just in, in, in the Mastery Trees. Where are you going to put that? Something that affects only one champion? You can't do that, right? These, these Masteries, they have to affect at least a large portion of the of the champion pool. So it allows you to be a bit more flexible with the numbers and allows you to target specific abilities. That is the idea behind the individualized mastery or talent system. Now let's compare that and let's let's see how this would look in Marvel Consist of Champions. By the way, this was just for example, uh, reducing uh, intimidating presence cooldown by four seconds, that would be massively overpowered uh, <laughs> so yeah it's just an example but uh, all right let's 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 move on and for this example I want to take a look at one of the strongest champions in the entire game of course I'm talking about the one and only iron Patriots and of course I'm lying this character actually sucks but we can make him better we can use the talents as a way to um, buff the champion in a way maybe he would get a, a talents that would increase his abilities more so than the characters that are already good in this game. Um, so first off, we need to change this screen just a tad. You can see the special attacks uh, option on the left side of the screen here that, that allow you to look at the special attacks. But honestly, you could look at those just by looking at the character's abilities by tapping on the right side of the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, replace that, that tab uh, with the talents. Uh, for now, and if you tapped on that, it would bring up the talents for the character that may look something like this. 
And again, these images are just kind of ripped from, from Dota. Of course, they'd be uh, slightly different if they were actually in this game. And you can see I already have some talent selected, which would also change the talent icon to look something like this. And now I want to go through each of these each of these talents one by one. First off, actually, before we get into the individual talents that I have mocked up here, uh, if you look at the number in the center, it no longer says 5, 10, 15, uh, or I'm sorry, 10, 15, 20, and 25. I've changed it to R2, R3, R4, and R5 for rank 2 through rank 5. So you'd unlock these different um, talents at, at different ranks. So the first set that we have here at rank 2 for the character, you could either uh, increase the base attack of Iron Patriot here by 100%, so initi uh, essentially doubling the character's base attack, which still wouldn't have him hitting anywhere near as hard as some of the heaviest hitters in the game, but it would sure make him a lot more fun to play. It wouldn't be so painful. Or you can choose to build him up uh, in a way that doesn't really increase his damage, a little bit more of a utility option. In this case, you're gaining some some uh, a healing ability, and it would be 40 health per second. Now, that's these are kind of just placeholder stats, but still gives the idea, and this would scale with the rank of the character, star level of the character, and stuff like that as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second option here. Uh, you have an option on the left that enhances the special one, and in this case, it would be draining 10% of the opponent's max power every time you hit the enemy with that special one. Or the special two, the option on the right, uh, a way to enhance the special two, would it apply an 8 second 100% petrify to the opponent, which petrify, of course, reduces the opponent's healing and power gain. So, gives you an option of, uh, of, of, of which ability you'd want to see uh, with the character. And although these are just kind of placeholder example things to select, uh, it's not totally random. The reason why I have Petrify on the right side um, as an option is that's, you know, pe the pe applying Petrify debuffs, it's not exclusive to the science class, but it is something that you see mostly with the science class, right? So. I figure the man inside the Iron Patriot suit is Norman Osborn, and if he was without his Iron Patriot suit, he'd be a science class character, right? Uh, I think, at least. <laughs> so, yeah, this kind of gives a way to, you know, open up some some uh, some kind of cross class abilities, uh, and the option on the left uh, is more of a tech type of an ability. There are some tech champions that have power drains. They're usually not quite as powerful as, let's say, the mystic uh, power drains, but tech champions certainly have it, and I feel like it fits. I feel like you could see it with Iron Patriot Special 1. Uh, the beam looks different than the other Iron Dude beams in the game, so um, yeah, it's, it's uh, somewhat of an example. It's just an example, but uh, it's not totally random uh, as to why they're selected that way. Let's take a look at the next set. Um, so you can pick essentially different immunities to have. In this case, I'm saying it's reducing the damage, and that's because I kind of hate immunities in this game. You might be thinking, like, what are you talking about, dude? You play almost exclusively immunity champions, and I do. Um, I think they're stupidly powerful. Uh, I, I wish that they were uh, more of a sliding scale of resistance, rather than full-on immunities. And I could talk about this for a very long time. I will save you guys the trouble and just give maybe an example or two of what I'm talking about. And let's say, uh, you know, people people really hated the, the class gates or the fact that you can't bring in four stars into Act 6, stuff like that, right? It's Kabam trying to advance the game along, trying to compel people to you know, to, to keep playing and keep getting these new characters, keep ranking them up and all that, right? Maybe it would be less of a uh, this, this kind of arbitrary feeling push towards uh, the higher star level champions. Maybe it wouldn't feel quite like that if uh, instead of full-on immunities, if uh, a character's had levels of resistance and as you increase in star level, they gain more resistance, right? So instead of a two-star champion and a six-star champion both being able to be fully immune to certain damage types, 
Um, if there was more of a uh, resistance thing, uh, you would get to a certain point in the game where, yeah, you're taking a, you, you know, if you're playing a champion that has, let's say, uh, poison resistance, you're going to take a ton of poison damage, and it's going to want to push you towards getting these higher star level characters that would uh, have higher amounts of that resistance and higher health pools to take advantage of willpower and things like that. Um, but it's hard to balance when you don't have anything to work with. It's, it's, it's all or nothing. Either you're taking damage from a damage type or you're not uh, in most cases. So in this case, I have it as just reducing the damage but really this could also be replaced by immunities because the immunity system, it's not going to be changing in this game uh, ever. The game's five years old. That would probably be a, uh, a gigantic change. But anyway, uh, I think that characters that don't have any types of immunities, they're at a severe disadvantage because characters that have these immunities, they're just as strong in most cases, right? They, they hit just as hard. They have just as much survivability. Um, but they're also immune to damage types. Um, so these characters that don't have these immunities because, hey, it doesn't really make sense for Iron Patri Patriot to be immune to anything, um, they're at a severe, severe disadvantage. And most of these characters I just end up not caring about um, because they, they lack the immunities. So this would be a way to kind of make up for that. Um, and, you know, again, may maybe full immunity wouldn't make sense for this guy, but... Hey, I mean, resistance makes sense. The dude's wearing a, a suit of armor, right? It makes sense that he'd be incinerate immune or, or, or I'm sorry, uh, reduce the damage taken from uh, incinerates or shock. But you also have to pick and choose. You don't, you don't get both. Um, I think it's especially overpowered when characters have uh, lots of immunities. So, uh, all right, let's let's move on to the final tier of talents and. The final tier, uh, I think, should affect the character's um, signature ability or or just some type of uh, like kind of iconic ability for the character. In this case, I am targeting the signature ability, and the option on the left would allow it to trigger twice per fight, once at 50%, once at 15%. Uh, or the option on the right, you can give up the arc overload uh, completely. Um, but uh, if you do that, of course, you have to gain something. Otherwise, why would you pick this option? And in this case, Iron Patriot would have a plus 50% increased offensive power gain. So looking at all of the options that I have selected here, uh, the first tier, gaining some health back. The second tier, uh, I selected a power drain option. The third tier, reducing shock damage because there's not that many shock immune champions in the game, so this would be nice to be able to take along to a quest. And then the final option increases power gain, allowing me to get those special ones faster to keep the opponent's power down, keep them from getting their special three. Iron Patriot, I think in this case, would be pretty cool. And you don't have to select these options. Everyone can select something different. You can go with a damage dealer that has the power drain or um, damage dealer that has the petrify if you're just looking to reduce damage. Of course, you know, if you need incinerate uh, damage reduction and stuff like that, you could do whatever you want. And that's, that's the idea behind the system is just allowing people to have that freedom to play a character the way they want to play a character. Hopefully you guys get the idea of why I think this would, would work and be a pretty cool system by now, but uh, I do want to show one other quick example before we move on to the next part of this idea. Uh, let's take a look at Archangel, and we're just going to skip ahead to the final talent uh, option here. On the left side, you have the option to uh, increase the duration of Archangel's bleeds by 3 seconds, essentially a 20% increase in the bleed duration since the base duration is 15 seconds. And this would be great for a few reasons. Number one, of course, um, it would allow you to get neurotoxins up a little bit easier, right? A little bit of extra time to work with to get the poisons and ultimately neurotoxins. Or Archangel is a pretty good option for the Do You Bleed node, uh, where even if you can't put neurotoxins on the opponent, if they're poison immune, that's fine. All you want is bleed damage anyway, and this would allow you to deal a little bit more damage in that case. Or the option on the right Archangel now causes shock instead of bleed. 
and neurotoxin is now the combination of shock and poison. So essentially replace all of Archangel's abilities uh, that cause bleed and anything that interacts with bleed with shock. There are far fewer shock immune uh, champions in this game uh, compared to bleed immune, so it would allow you to use Archangel in uh, more cases than we can currently use them. Um, but of course, you know, you, you can't have both, so you, you have to kind of pick and choose, and Archangel is still going to be good in some situations, and not so good in others. Um, but allows the champion to be a bit more flexible in this case. So, um, it's not always about just increasing the, the raw power of the, of, the, of the champion, it is sometimes uh, a way to just you know, change how their abilities work to allow them to work in different situations where they otherwise couldn't. Okay, now, the last thing that I want to talk about is how you unlock these uh, abilities, which is a little bit unclear. Uh, I don't know exactly the best way to go about it, um, but I like the idea of having to, to do something to unlock these abilities. Having to uh, have a way have a way for the game to test your ability with these characters sort of uh, and allow you to master the characters and this gives us an opportunity to change uh, how your profile would look this is something that actually the devs talked about at comic-con so they may already have um, some sort of plans to, to do something like this um, they didn't say specifically how they would go about it but they, they said they wanted players to have the ability to kind of show off um, some cool things that they've done in the game more so than than we can right now so let's say we we had we had a new section to the profile here called uh, champions mastered and maybe if you go through some sort of process to unlock the talents for for different characters uh, someone like uh, like Captain America here, forgot his name for a second there, uh, or Thing, or uh, Captain Marvel, and they have different borders depending on how well you've mastered them, or maybe different star levels, I don't know. Uh, and these borders, I think these borders, uh, I actually took them from Kabam's uh, other game, the uh, Transformers Forge to Fight game, so uh, if it looks different, but at the same time, still kind of fits. That's why. It's still a, a, a kabam asset at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, I think this would be cool. Just a way to show off that, that you have mastered these characters. It would work well for uh, recruiting purposes. You know, players can look at, look at someone's profile and tell right away, like, oh, these are the characters that this player has, has put more time into and stuff like that. Now, as far as again how you would actually go about mastering these characters you know I have some ideas but none of them are, are super concrete um, we're we're seeing a, uh, the end of the first story first story arc in this game with the conclusion of act 6 and then there's going to be another story that starts up um, and I think that would be a good time to maybe say uh have Karina or or even introduce a, a different character entirely, maybe like Professor X or something like that. Uh, um, maybe that could be a way for him to be in the game uh, instead of as a fighter if he was a way to kind of help us uh, achieve like the next level of our characters. Maybe we're getting too close to Realm of Champions territory at this point, I don't know. But I, I really want to see additional customization in this game and if we can unlock that if it could be part of the story where, you know, maybe uh, Karina says, you know, we're going to have to be stronger to take on, like, the next phase of the contest. Uh, it would also be a way for for older players, or I'm sorry, for, uh, for newer players to catch up, um, you know, being something that players have access to. Um, Go, you know, going through something that would maybe be on the level of, let's say, like uncollected or something like that, um, uh, or or maybe even less than that, right? Uh, uh, just opening up this new system and allowing players to increase their power level, to take on the older content, kind of catch up through that, and then have the uh, the new content in the game balanced uh, around having 
uh, you know, uh, having our, our champions be stronger. Um, something like that, right? And you can unlock each rank in different ways. Um, you know, every, anything from very simple, you know, turn in some, some catalysts, essentially the same way you'd rank up characters today, to unlock um, some of the tiers or actually be put through um, specific challenges that would appear in, let's say, the objectives screen. Um, so instead of uh, at the top there, Summer's Journey or Special, there'd be another tab that would say, uh, you know, something along the lines of Champion Mastery, and you'd be given these tasks that you'd have to complete. They could be anything from, uh, you know, like I said, more generic type of challenges to something very champion specific, like getting through. Uh, Wolverine in Realm of Legends using Void and doing that in less than 50 hits or something like that, you know? Um, different challenges I think could be fun. Uh, it could be something like that, or it really can just be tied into the, uh, you know, the, the rank that we take our champions to and, and have that open up as soon as you get them to rank 2 or beyond. Um, but I really do like the idea of being kind of put through our paces and having to actually go out of our way, do something a little bit extra to unlock these special abilities. Um, you know, I, players would like to get things for free, right? I think a lot of people like the, uh, the login calendars. Uh, people especially loved the Summoner Appreciation Calendar that was uh, available over the summer. But players also don't necessarily like to be given everything, right? We like to have uh, have things to work towards in games, even games that are not free to play, even something like, let's say, Super Smash Brothers. When you buy that game, you, you pay the full price for that game, they don't just give you every character, right? You have to do things to unlock the characters and unlock plenty of other things in the game as well. Um, it's something that players like to do, uh, as long as it's something reasonable. So... Yeah, I, I would rather see something like, uh, you know, um, a different a different tab even at the top here uh, that would take you into something that, that maybe looks like the store here, but instead of being items to select and buy, it would actually be, you know, you'd be kind of interfacing with, uh, with a character that would give you these challenges, um, and maybe you can't have unlimited at a time, you could only have a certain amount available at a time, or, uh, or, or you know, once you, once you start a quest, you either have to finish it, or you can abandon it, but you have a cooldown, something like that. Um, I don't really necessarily care how Kabama goes about that part, uh, as long as we do have a way to further increase the customization of our characters through the individual champion talent system so yeah there's my idea uh let me know what you guys think and thank you all for watching see you in the next video take care